So hey guys, I'm Jack from Our Culture. I'm here with Ryan and we're talking about some mental health. Question number one. How do you think the live music experience, including concerts and festivals, impact the mental well-being of both performers and audience members? That's what music's for, isn't it? It's, um, music's one of the greatest things for people. Um, I think it... I dread to think where my mental health would be without music, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you there. Um, I think, I think being a listener, um, music's good for your mental health. Even if you're at your lowest, like you can. I like to not roll in it, but if I'm sad, I'll listen to sad music. Do you know what I mean? It makes yeah. you. It, I've always been a believer in that. I'm not one of these that you won't catch me listening to. One Direction when I'm on a low, do you know what I mean? Though? Yeah. Like you won't. Um, but I think it's, I think it's important. I think, I think artists and bands probably don't realise how much they help people's mental health. Like yeah. I do, like the amount of conversations I've had with people, and they'll say, "Oh, this song saved my life," and it's. You can't comprehend that. Do you know when somebody says that to you? Yeah. It's like, what? Like, how's my song done that? But songs have saved, songs have saved my life. Like, I've, there's been points where I've, I've been at rock bottom, and there can be that one song that you put on, and it can make you think of someone or make you think of a better time. Absolutely, and, yeah. And that's what it's about. But I think in general, music is a very good thing for people's mental health, and I think it. Like I say, without it, I don't know where I'd be. <laughs> awesome. That's good. That's good. Question number two, how can music venues and event organisers contribute to creating a more supportive environment for artists? It's a good question, that, you know. It's a really good question. I noticed yeah. that earlier. I thought, wow. Um, funny side of me wants to say, just give me a fucking hot meal on the rider. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I think it's like anything. We're all in it together. Venues and artists. Artists can't. Venues can't exist without artists, and artists can't keep doing what they're doing without venues. Mm -hmm. So it is in within everybody's interest to help each other. Now, to pick something, to pick one thing in particular that you could be like, they should do this. That's quite hard. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think. I think for me personally, like with the venue, I think I love it when we've turned up to gigs before and you've got a promoter there and venue staff that greet you with a smile. They want to know how your day's been. Did you get here all right? Even if you're late for for loading or whatever, they'll help you get in there. I think, like just like I said, I know it's a joke, but a hot meal, a hot meal changes the game. You know, when you, yeah. you're hungry and you're tired and you've been driving in a small van and you've probably had a problem on the way of some sort. And sometimes just a hot meal can change it. It does for me with morale. Um, but like anything, everybody, you should know that eating is good for your mental health. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like everybody surely should realise that. What you feel good if you eat good. Um, but in terms of supporting artists' mental health, I think just stop fucking ripping people off and it'll be alright. <laughs> um, but that that, oh, that doesn't go to every venue. Whatsoever, there's so many great venues out there, and and so many that support artists in every yeah. way possible. Um, like I said, that's a very good question. I'm finding it hard to answer. That's okay. But um, I think I don't know. I mean, just just a little. It's like anything. A little check in before the show and after the show. I love speaking to a promoter when we get there, or bar staff, or whatever, or the security team, or whoever. You have that conversation before the show. You get up, do your thing. You like to think that afterwards they'll always be like, nice show, blah, 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 how did it go for you? Yeah. And it's, and we always we always give it back as well. Like, I want to make sure that they've had a good night. They've not had any shit going on. Like, yeah. There's no fans causing anyone a headache or whatever. Like. But yeah, I think just checking in, really. Okay. Question number three, are there any specific songs or artists you find therapeutic or uplifting for your mental health and why? Well, 
There's loads. <laughs> um, so we'll start off sad. I'll tell you what, I'll give one sad, one happy. Sounds good. So for me, I think my first City and Colour for me were my first. That was Dallas's, Dallas's first album that he did under City and Colour was what I needed at the time. Like that. Um, great Save Your Scissors, yeah. like, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's like, I don't know, it, 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 it was sadness in an album, but he's so pretty with it, do you know yeah. what I mean? And it would, even if I was at my lowest, I, c I can listen to that album, and if I need to cry, I'll cry, but you best believe I'll feel better after. And everything he says in it is <laughs> like, normally, bang, it's bang on the money normally. Um, I think, I think to, I'm trying to think of the best happy song I can right now, but there isn't one. I think for me at the minute, my song I put on when I need a lift is Three Strange Days, you heard it? No. School of Fish, or is it similar? I'm pretty sure it's School of Fish. Three yeah. Strange Days. Three strange days, I had no obligation. No. Check it out, it's a good song. A very good song. Um, and that always makes me feel, that reminds me of Mason Todd. It reminds me of like, just jamming in the car and like, well, whatever we're doing. We put that on in the kitchen at home and like, you best believe everyone's in a better mood. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Sing Three Strange Days. It's a, good, it's a good song for it. Question number four, with the rise of social media, how do you think online platforms influence the mental health of musicians, fans, and industry professionals in the music community? Oh, you're a good liar. <laughs> um, I try. Yeah, it's... Let's not beat around the bush. Social media is shit. 100%. It kind of... It's obviously helped the industry. Like, there's... We have platforms now to reach millions of people, whereas before you would have to go and tour and put your hours in, which yeah. I firmly believe in bands should, and artists should still do, and which that's why... Last year we just tried to play as many shows, and this year it's just play as many shows as possible. Yeah. But then there's that constant little voice in the back of your head that's like, make sure you're keeping up the socials. Make sure you make sure make sure everyone knows how busy you are. Make sure that everyone knows that what you've got going on. And it while it's great as a promotional tool, and it helps us. Like I think most of our fans would probably gain through social media. It is jarring, and it is taxing, and it is. Mm. I'd, I find it hard being, I find it hard being, do you know these like, like TikTok videos, 15 seconds? Yeah. Do you know to, because that's all that people tell you that, so we get told, you, you, what everybody gets told at the minute, keep your, keep your content short and sweet, because people's, ex, their, uh, yeah. quick views. Yeah, it's, attention spans like, minute isn't it yeah but then it kind of like i find that empty do you know what i mean like yeah. I'm, i want to sit here and have a 30 minute conversation with you and i would much rather that go out and which is why we're doing it. i don't want to lose my trailer thought here yeah but it's it's kind of it's kind of jarring sometimes to keep the substance within your within your art when Everyone's like, just flush it out. Just you need to get as many things out as possible. You need to be posting three videos a day, bro. You don't. You really don't. No. Just like, I think that's one thing we tried to do. We just tried to to stay authentic. And if we've not posted it in a week, there was, there's been times where if you get panicky and you feel like, oh god, like people think we're going quiet, bro, bro, like, and it can be quite, it can make you quite anxious. I think. Yeah. Um, but then on the complete other end of the scale, when I've when I felt low, we might have something to post, and I posted it, and I see a comment on there, and I'm like, "Fucking hell, I needed that today." Like, you, social media is a great thing, but I just think you got to balance it. You've yeah. got to. You've got to be putting just as much effort into your, your real-life live show, your real-life relationships with fans, 
and and every and like your like the people around you. If you've got if you've got sat, like techs around you, like shout them out, gas them up. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. like it's social media, man. It's a fuck off. Um, I'm a fan, but I'm not. I'm even on a personal level. Like I don't. I post on Instagram, but not a lot. Yeah. And I try. I think I post about the things I'm proud of and the things that make me happy. I don't overshare. I think that's a big thing as well. I think I think some people do overshare on social media, and I don't. I don't think they realise what it's <coughs> doing to them. But then there's the other argument that's like, if you need help, shout about it, and I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah. But there's ways to do it, and there's other people, other avenues. We won't go into that yet, but <laughs> like, um, what do you think? As a photographer, uh, per, like I, I think I'm on the same level, like 50-50. Um, like I like it, but I hate it. Yeah. Because like people, I, I before I did all this, like I wanted to go into like travel photography and like, travel the world. But looking back on like what people do, they just do it for the clout, I yeah. believe. And it's like they're living this life that isn't actually true. They're just posting. That, like, that's the key word with a lot of this stuff is clout. And I know, like, a lot of a lot of people at the minute are saying to us, like, you're all over my for you page on TikTok, and it's clout. But and Todd's put work into that to do that. But at the same time, it infuriates me that he's had to put that much time into getting on someone's for you page when we could have spent that time writing another song. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, not not to get like nitty with it, but it's. For me personally, social media is is a love hate thing. Like, mm. don't get me wrong, it has its perks, but at the same time, I just like I'm from a generation where we, when I was at school, the internet was like hop, just starting to pop, like MSN Messenger, Go and on, yeah. like every bit of social media that's came about. I've been not to sound like a fossil or, anything, but like, I'm in 29, but it's like Facebook. I remember when that started, and everyone from Bebo were like. Get on Facebook, or get on Facebook, and it's like it's pressure, like yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you got to post on Facebook, and then now there's Instagram, now you got to keep on top of that one as well. Don't forget about your Twitter, bro. Yeah. And then there's whatever fucking else, the, like God knows what the next one's gonna be. But it's, I wish people, I wish, I wish we could always play out still. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Gone are the days of like, I can't imagine what kids do now. Like, I know we like. As technology, as technology advances, like, it's bound to happen, but I think it's dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. And I'm, I'm glad that I got to experience the little bit before. Do you know yeah. what I mean? The little bit of sweetness. Yeah. But, yeah. God, we deep that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I totally agree, yeah. <laughs> uh, last question. How do you think the current state of the music industry, including factors like streaming services and changing revenue, models affect the mental health of artists and professionals working within the field? Oh, the question. <laughs> uh, it's not good, is it? Like, yeah. I think if we were doing, like, it's no secret that you get paid naught point pennies for streams on Spotify and there's an argument there again on the other side that's like, your audience is bigger, you, you can reach so many more people through doing it. But then at the same time, it, not that it, it's kind of sucked all the, not the worth out of it, but people, I want to make this my day job. Mm. And, and, and the boys, we, we all want to make, this has been our dream since we were little. And, Obviously, growing up, we watched our favourite bands earn plates, gold plaques, and, oh, they sold this many albums, HMV, it, you bought the album and all this stuff. And although people buy physical music to support bands still, that's 100%, but it's obviously nowhere near the amount that people used to consume. Yeah. And it's it's obviously took a huge chunk out of the, the industry. I've, I can't talk about it like I've been in the industry for years. 
I have been in the industry for years, but like I'm talking, I've not been in the industry for like 30, 40 years and watched it like go from that to this. Yeah. But it's, makes it hard, mate, especially when you're, when you've spent, so we'll, we'll spend months writing something, recording it. You then, we then sit there and think, how do we want to present this? So you spend hours doing music videos, concepts, artwork. We hand make a lot of stuff. Um, all the visual side of it goes into it. And then sometimes on release day, you can sit there and you can get lost in it where you're like, you're looking at streams and you think, I don't fucking care how many streams it's getting. Like, I'm, but you do, and yeah. it's hard not to <laughs> when you're comparing. Everyone has a number next to their name, don't they, on Spotify? It's, oh, oh yeah. there's this amount, you're getting this amount of monthly listeners a night. It's hard when you, so we just dropped the EP not long ago, and our numbers skyrocketed, which it rightly so it should have. We've got all this attention, everyone's listening to it, got put on playlists. And then it, it can be kind of, it can be a bit gutting watching that number over weeks just drop slightly and you, you can easily believe, oh, no one cares, like they're not caring about it anymore, but they are. You have to remember that new people have listened to your music and that, that number is a monthly listener, so that's people, that one person has listened to, to you that month. Am I losing myself here? Yeah. Yeah, but it's hard, I find it, I get, I get a bit in my head about it sometimes, about our numbers. And I remember there was times where, so like during COVID, bands were doing everything that they could fucking do to get their social numbers up. Yeah. Um, and, and just stay active, because we couldn't tour or anything like that. And I remember seeing like, even mates bands, like their numbers were skyrocketing. I was thinking like, how are they doing that? Like we're doing the same amount of work. I just I couldn't get it, and it correlates to streams and stuff like that. But getting back to the question about streaming services and what what it's doing and the effects is it negative and positive? I think start. It's exactly the same as social media. It's fifty fifty. Yeah. There's a plus and there's a negative for everything, but a part of me, just a little part of me that is like, I do hope someone one day just speaks out. It's obviously got so much more power than me and says like, let's take you back a bit or like, let's change the rules. Let's change the fact that this streaming service, they're not allowed to earn that much of these artists. Like, they should get a, the, the artist cut should be bigger. Yeah. I'm a, a big believer in that. Yeah, absolutely. But you, like at the same time, we know what we're signing up for. It's like, they've not made us put our music on Spotify or yeah. Apple or whatever. Like, we've done that because we want to reach people, and that's what people do now. They stream music. They don't go and buy a CD and go back home and listen to it or put it on in their car. It's just so there's so much more access. And but then, like I say, it's a it's a great thing for us because people discover us that would have never. Like, there's a guy in Indonesia on his computer and he's just found our culture on Spotify. That's not happening, do you know what I mean? If we yeah. just put a few CDs out that we were selling up and down the UK, like the chances of him listening to it is very slim if we didn't have streaming. Yeah. So, very good question. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's, I'm trying to conclude. I want a good line. Yeah. Um, I think at the end of the day, we can't change what's like going on with streaming services and all these other platforms now. Like it's very much part of music, um, but I think, it, like I said earlier, I think if if the if the cut was a bit more fairer, a bit more fair, sorry, um, I think it it'd have a benefit on artists' mental health for sure. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know. Is this, could they do more? What could they do? Like, I'm just thinking of it in terms of money, but they could. I guess another avenue is like you've 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 got artists on Spotify that week in week out, 
a number one. You've got the A-list, haven't you? Yeah. And they get so much more heat and so much, like, they get press for so much more. And I guess maybe they should put some some programs or, like, some algorithms that boost newer artists or artists with not as many monthly listeners and maybe make... Maybe they just need to make more opportunities for smaller artists and bands. I think that would be be a good thing. But, yeah, that's a hard one. Yeah. Sorry if that was confusing, my answer, but... That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. And just to finish it off, is there anything, uh, well, any advice that you'd give to bands that are up and coming or pe people just in general, even if that's fans, any advice on, like, mental health and how to speak out or... Anything like that? I think just talk. Just talk to your mates. Um, I'm a fucker for it because I'm a preacher and I, I'm always there saying people need to talk to people and stuff like that. But I do it. I bottle it up. I've had a right fucking mare of a week this week. The last month's been shit, if I'm honest. But you, I think if you, if you talk, it's the saying in it: a problem shared is a problem halved. That's what I've always thought. But sometimes when you when you when you're in it or you're having the problem, you you're not hearing that. You're not. Like I can shut down real easy, especially with people, and especially people close to me. I think as long as you're as long as you've got somebody or like whether it's a friend online, it might not even be one of your best mates that you know in person. It might just be that one person that you spoke to for a year about music or a band that you've connected with might just be a conversation that you need to have, but it will help. And um, I think as well, my girlfriend's gonna fucking have me for this, but I think like going for walks, that's, it helps me like exercise. I don't do it enough and I put off walking all the time. I'm like, oh, I don't want it, especially this time of year, it's crap. Yeah. But like today, we went on a walk, went up, a, went up to Croft Hill near us and it, it does clear your head. It, it fresh air is good air, and eating. I said that earlier. For me, yeah. I really, I'm a fucker, mate. Because sometimes I just won't eat, and it's not like I'm doing it to myself on purpose. Like, but I just am not hungry, and I'm like, I can't bother. But it's fuel, man. Like a car needs petrol. The human body needs f like food and water, and just remember to eat. And remember to drink. I'm actually telling them like actual survival instincts right now. <laughs> um, but to me, like, like my mates have to sometimes say, "Have you ate today?" I'm like, oh, "Fuck, no." Yeah, I should go and eat some. I, I need to. I need to now. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah, just share, just talk to your mates. If you if you're in a band. Talk to your band. They're your best mates. They are, they're your ride or dies. They're the people doing, they're doing everything with you and they're doing it for the same reason. And sometimes you might be fucking at each other, but you've always got to remember that you've, you're all going the same direction. You all want the same thing at the end. Mm. And it's, sometimes you, this is another thing that's probably going to come back to bite me, but just get over yourself. I know I need to sometimes. Um, and look, I think sometimes when somebody is, if someone's being a bit of a prick, don't always go at them for being a prick. Sometimes people might be acting a bit of a prick because they've got other shit going on. And they, like, they probably don't know how to talk about it, they don't want to talk about it. Yeah. But sometimes it just takes that person to just see past the bullshit and just calm and collective way. Is everything all right? Is it though? Is it? Just keep asking it and you, you'll get some. Do you know what I mean? That's how I work. You know? I am purely speaking about myself here. Um, yeah. What would you say to the photographers? Uh, well, it, again, but it's hard really. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Like, speak out. Like, even if, if it is someone online, like you said. Um, it's like I, I, I speak to quite a few of them online yeah. that I haven't met before. Yeah, same. And uh, I had I had some some heat the other day off off a client 
and uh, I just spoke to someone about it, and you know, like after I spoke about it, it felt better. Yeah. It's just like it's not my fault that the client ended up being yeah a bit of an ass, but. I think another thing to remember as well is don't don't always watch what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Like I've I have to remember this sometimes. Like just because they're off doing that and this is going off and this is happening for them, like doesn't mean it's not gonna happen for you. It doesn't yeah. it's just it's just not the right time yet. That's all. And but if you keep working at it and you keep doing what you want to do, whatever that is, whether that's music or fucking riding a bike one hand, don't know. But just keep yeah. doing it, like. And don't, just don't get lost in the thick of what everybody else is doing, because it don't fucking do you very good. I think pe people are more authentic when they just focus on their own shit and have tunnel vision, you know what I mean? That's what I'm trying at the minute. That's my 2024 thing, just to try not Try not look around at what other bands are at our level, like what they've got going off, what they're doing, because it's so easy to think, fucking hell, man, why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we getting this off? Why, why aren't this happening for us? Yeah. But I just always think, it'll happen. It's all right. You just got to wait for it, innit? Wait for your turn. Yeah. Just so keep steady. going at it. Yeah. Yeah. So steady. Yeah, man. 100%. Awesome. Thank you very much for. Thank you very much for doing for this, bro. I really appreciate you. It's awesome. But, uh, yeah. Done. Anyway, and if anybody ever wants to fucking chat, holler. Always an open book.